Part 4 Installing Epoxy Chem Resin Worktops The instructions in this demonstration are basic guides and are not intended to cover all situations that may arise in the installation process. There will be specific conditions for each project which will need to be managed as they occur. Kiwani Chem Resin comes from the factory as ordered and ready for installation. To install chem resin, you will need the following tools and hardware. We recommend a carpenter's level, leveling shims, a minimum of two C-clamps, 1 16th inch thick spacers, two buckets with water and cloths, putty knives, two part epoxy cement, tubes of silicone, scrap 2x4s, and proper safety equipment. The installation manual, which can be downloaded from kiwani.com, should be read carefully before beginning the installation. Prior to installation, all worktops should be pre-fitted to ensure they have the correct configuration and measurements. Drawings included with the chem resin should be reviewed and compared to shop drawings to confirm all dimensions are correct. Each worktop has a label that shows its part number that matches the number logic shown on the drawings. Once the layout is correct, boards are inserted between the surface and the cabinet which leaves a space for the silicone to be applied. The upper drawers are also removed in order to have more space to work. Chem resin surfaces should always be attached to base cabinets using silicone because it can be manipulated more easily. When a surface assembly is installed, the full elevation must be installed at the same time, not in sections. Once all cabinets have silicone on the top edges, the boards are removed and the protruding part of this work surface in front of the cabinets is measured to one inch or as specified and the joints are started. The surface joints must be one sixteenth of an inch. This measurement can be obtained using a steel piece of this gauge. A clamp should be placed in the front in order to set the joint height. When joints are being worked, make sure they are flush at the front and the clamp should be adjusted so that all joints are flush and even from front to back. Shims may also be needed between the casework and the work surface in order to get the worktop joints completely flush and even. Prepare the epoxy cement. The cement comes in two parts, A and B. Mix the two parts half and half on a smooth, disposable surface and use the mixture as quickly as possible. If the cement isn't used within 15 to 20 minutes, the mixture will harden and be wasted. Once the joint is correct, the epoxy cement is applied with a putty knife, pressing the cement into the groove several times until enough cement has penetrated the joint. When the groove is well filled, the excess cement is removed with a putty knife, being careful to avoid scratching the surface and leaving it even with the surfaces on each side. Be sure to have a cloth with a bucket of dirty water and a cloth with a bucket of clean water to clean the epoxy residue. Constantly change the water so that the surfaces are clean when they dry. Allow the epoxy to dry for three to four hours. Chem resin work surfaces cannot be sanded. Do not allow the epoxy cement to remain on the surface. The surface must be completely clean. After the joints have completely dried, the clamps are removed and the remaining spaces are filled in the same manner. Not all surfaces are perfectly flat and some joints may be encountered that have to be worked more than once until the joint is completely flush. If worktops are being stored, they should never be stored on their side and should always be stored on a flat surface with protection between each top to prevent warping or sagging. Never stand on or place heavy items on the chem resin.